It is March 5th, 2018, and this is Atlanta United FC Weekly, a home before dark podcast. Where Shannon? I love it. I love it. We're high on energy, guys, because you guys know the season is about to start on Sunday. Yes, I cannot <laughs> wait for DC United. Season is finally over. Yamil Assad's going to come back to Season's the house. Finally- season's finally starting i'm so excited i yeah. can't wait either first game of the season sunday at mercedes-benz stadium 7 30 p.m right some some the, i can't no, wait definitely three <laughs> i can't wait to see lgp out there just slide tackling uh, and murdering guys. carmona slide tackling awesome. the world no <laughs> need for a number six lineup is set a healthy barco oh, it's gonna man. be awesome healthy barco Gonna roll that's, the world. that's not what's going on, wah, is it? Wah, wah. <laughs> I am Tim Herb, and as always, I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts, Mr. Kevin Bradley to my left. On a word, occupants. <laughs> Dan James, also to my left. And then we got nobody to Chris the right. Chris McCann, the best player in the world. Absolutely. Chris McCant. <laughs> I, I can't even take credit for that. I can't remember who kept calling him that. It was ATL Trains or somebody on Twitter. Uh, no, it kept... was... Um... A kill circa, uh, yes. Yeah, it was a it was a kill circa. Who's also a um, what do you guys call that area? The tri-state area, Clemson, Midlands, New York, Midlands? New Jersey. Oh, tri-state area. What? what, like, uh, what, what like, yeah. What is what is like the Greenville, Spartanburg, Clemson, Anderson area considered? I don't know oh, is, it, is that anything. like one mid- state though? What? Isn't that one state though? Right, but it's right at the tip of four. Actually, four right, states. Right, the quad right, state area. Right yeah, I don't tip. know. You like, never hear that. You always hear like the tri-state area. I guess like you know you're the quad state area. Yeah, I don't really know. Like Blue Ridge, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. I know in Louisiana, wherever Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma meet, they call it the Arklatex. But oh, uh, sounds close to Arklatex. Yeah, Akil Circos also are very, very much giving him credit for calling him Chris McCant. He was god awful on Saturday. And then our defensive line was about as found more unresponsive on Saturday than Rick Ross was at his home. What? No, you, you, you didn't hear about oh, that. <laughs> Did Rick Ross Jeez. die? No, everybody thought he was. He's fine. He's actually back home. He's got discharged got really from the hospital. Sleep apnea? Probably so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're back. We got no guest on the right side. We figure we'll let you guys look and look at our ugly mug and. Listen to us, guys. You're saying it's too soon. Uh, it's been two days. Yeah, suck it up. Yeah, uh, I know. He I, it's put just, it in the past. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to offend. Just triggering everybody. I just figured he's at home. He seems to be fine now. I think the reports were a little misleading. Stop but. listening to Rick Ross. It's 2018. Listen to better rap music. That's nah, the he's, he's the Teflon Don, man. We talking about corn? Who's fucking awesome with producing Life Is Peachy? King Peach. Peach, 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 peach. <laughs> All right, where to start? Where to start? Because we do want to keep a, a high note here, but at the same yeah. time, so we're going to have to talk about Saturday. Right. And rather than in, r- rather than starting out on a high note, it's almost better to start out with a negative and then on the end on a high note. And because we've had this huge wave of reviews, which is awesome, we're getting super close to 100 ratings and reviews on iTunes. We actually technically, we technically have over that. So we have, for those of you guys who oh, don't, we have that. Over that, if you combine three iTunes pages, essentially, um, we've had that for a while. Main show, no, 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 that's, that's true. But at the same time, we have. So, for those of you guys who don't know, back in 2013, Kevin and I started Home Before Dark. It was called Banter Podcast back then, and we have kind of branched off. We have two different shows, and then we also have a podcast network feed and. That, we got that this host, one that host, the better one without the foreigners. That host, <laughs> that hosts both shows on it as well. If you guys are interested in that, we have crossover uh, listeners for sure. But there are reviews on there for Atlanta United FC Weekly on that feed. But that said, thank you guys for all of you guys that are listening on YouTube. Make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button if you like it. Give us a thumbs up, and then also hit the notification bell because YouTube is all about Google's all about changing stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. So hit that bell. Make sure you guys get notified whenever we go live, and then. If you guys are listening to us on iTunes, make sure that you guys do a review and a rating. 
and let us know what you think no, of the show. stop with the reviews. That's <laughs> enough reviews. <laughs> let, let us know if you, what you think of the show, and we will read them out. We're going to start reading them out towards the end of the show just because they're starting to get so heavy, and we're starting the show off with like 15 minutes of, of just reading reviews right yeah. now. So we, we're dedicated to keep reading those. Oh, think, absolutely. It's such a fun way to interact with you guys along with the live chat on YouTube if you're watching live, and then uh, we'll just do those at the end of the show. So Yeah, yeah. that sounds good. So fantasy, you want to do roundups yeah. of that first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you guys know, if you if you guys are playing fantasy uh, MLS with us, we have a league going on. Obviously, you do know then. But if you guys aren't playing fantasy MLS, come learn how to do it with us because we really don't know what we're doing and what depends on what scores you're checking when MLS decides when they're going to actually mess with stuff, how that scoring works. Anyway, it seems like they're constantly messing with the rotisserie scoring, as it were. And go to, but go to gethomebeforedark.com forward slash fantasy. Go sign up if you guys haven't already. It's not too late. We're going to be keeping tallies during the, the season. We're going to keep keep st- uh, track of standings. And at the end of the season, we're going to give away a prize pack and then also a guest spot on the show in studio. Come hang out with us. It's uh, Take it as it were, or take it as you want. It's I think it's worth worth it, if, if for yeah. no other reason than the prize pack. So we, right. we, can, we can read out top five if you want to. Um, <clears throat> the way MLS Fantasy works is your name is what populates your last name. So... We tweeted it out. <clears throat> if you guys found this on Twitter or if you're on Twitter, if you can go into MLS and change your last name to your Twitter handle, we'll post it. We posted it up earlier today. Uh, we'll do that every week with the top 10. And then if you have your Twitter handle as your last name, we can just make sure that all those people get tagged. But we'll update that every week, obviously. And uh, pretty good showing. What are we up to? 58 people in there now? Yeah, there are 58 teams right now. So it is a little bit competitive going. I think that's by far <laughs> the biggest fantasy league I've ever been part of, even if it's just pick them. What happened to Birmingham's going to get relegated? I feel like I tweeted it out, calling them a wanker uh, with emojis, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I couldn't find them again. So I hope I didn't uh, find did them they, and they make them they, change their they, name. Are they? I think they might be below the 30-person cutoff line that MLS gives us. Oh, maybe. We have 57, but 20 or 58, 28 of those do not get shown because they're that crap at the game. Uh, Tim was one of those people until all the adjustments this morning. Collusion. Well, last night I was beating you by one point, but or I was only behind you by one point. Now I'm behind you by more than that. Yeah. You just barely made the cut. Bonus points. What onto the thirty? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's weird. They're they're definitely changing things because at first it was top twenty. Now it's top thirty. And I think if people complain enough, maybe we can get the full leagues uh, well, standings. I, apparently, they're supposed to go on to the MLS app now, or they're rolling that out at some point. Oh, really? I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because right now MLS app all it does is launch a web view. It doesn't right. even launch web view. It, yeah, it, it's it so launches. Frustrating. It launches just Safari. The webs. I hate using Safari. I just want to use Chrome. So in the top five right now, at number five with seventy points, we have A B F C and last name's Mick Kinder. I, I, I hope that's. Uh, a, I hope you, you don't need to change your last name. I think you're good. I have a different ranking. A B F C only have seventy points at number five. Oh, I'm reading. Oh, you yeah, you're the worst. I, oh yeah. god, pay, pay attention, Dan. <laughs> go, go, going fifth to first. So at number four, we have the Gentle Sharks. Hawkman, I think it's Corey Hawkman from Twitter. Oh, we didn't get a third place. Apparently, third place is just blank in our league for some reason. Last nigga, it's four. Oh man! Yeah, that's all right. I, I, I will fade away. I think a there's a little days. collusion going on the way that the scores got switched around, and now Dan, Dan James, right. our very own Dan James, our, our British mastermind, Plastic AF, he's in third place with 71 points. We have OTP MVP. We, we got a try hard in here that's got two accounts apparently trying real hard to win and taking first and second places. It appears. Yeah, because there's no there's no more unique of a last name than Jones. So yeah. we have OTP MVP Jones at 78 points in second place. And then we have squad rotation, 79 Jones, either Liverpool fan or he has a... I, I, I he's do like reference to Tata. that he could not choose another allegiance to another team, so he kept his icon as just the generic MLS. It's probably Orlando. Sure. Probably. <laughs> It's probably just an Orlando troll trying to get <laughs> first <laughs> place. <laughs> just to and they'll get all the home before that. Sabotage. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. We'll, we'll definitely keep uh, trying to keep up with the, the live chat. It's going off. We love... Oh. And oh, I accidentally closed oh, it out. Yep. Tim has oh. ruined everything. I definitely ruined it. 
So yeah, uh, keep updating those. I think uh, lineup changes have reset as of this afternoon, so you can go ahead and do that and get your lineup set for the first week of the MLS season. Yeah, get in there. Get in first there. First week of our season. You can't. You can't do worse than I did. I think I had like three DNs. It was. The- <laughs> and then I had two of the Atlanta United back line. In yeah, there. so there's a whole learning curve. We'll have to talk separately about this. It's not like fantasy football. It's more like you you were you had an app description where it's more like a pick 'em than a yeah. actual fantasy. Yeah. You're not stuck with your lineup week in you, and week yeah. out. You play in the stock market a little bit. Exactly. Which I got screwed. Dempsey didn't play, which yep. didn't expect to see that. But yeah, I think everybody kind of had some. The only reason I did anything is because Christian uh, Christian Tachera, the center attacking mid, the number 10 for Vancouver, had a, an assist or two. I know he assisted Alfonso Davies' goal, or a goal, and he was my captain. So I will say that it has made it made me pay. I mean, I didn't really have More much attention. of a choice but to pay attention to other games this weekend mm-hmm. because ours was so shit. But uh, I definitely found myself like last watching the Timbers game and the... Orlando, yeah. uh, DC game of, I had aside, and he, yeah, it was great. A little bit of re- rooting interest, yeah. That that Orlando DC game was. I can't believe Orlando pulled that back. Was it a ninety third minute? We just happened yeah, to catch and, it, and they had a bunch of chances as well. Being a man down, being a man down, was, exactly. Uh, so anyway. yeah, we had our game this Saturday. You want to catch up on live chat, Tim? Anything going on? Uh, yeah, we have a soccer in the streets call out. So we have a couple new names in here that I haven't seen in a. In a while, if not at all, Joshua Reynolds, Joe Johnstone, and then there was one more. But uh, yeah, just trying to keep up with that. A lot of people talking about McCann, <laughs> Brittany S. saying she's better than McCann, Kendrick Brock. I, I don't, I don't even want to justify reading that. But good thing Tim is better at podcasting than fantasy. I try not this to true. justify interacting with him in most scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Johnstone says usually listen to the podcast. Left, left you guys a review. Thank you for that. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Um, Thank you, Joe. So yeah, game was Saturday. Uh, before that, we we get two bits of news since the last time we recorded. I think it was the next day we find out that Barco's injured, going to be out yes, for we six did. weeks. Yeah, I got that text from Tim. I was like, what the fuck, Tim? Why are you trolling me with this? And it was, no, it was actually real. Yeah. So he's out four to six weeks. We expected some lineup changes. And then we also got some news about some different contractual who's on who's officially on the roster mm-hmm. who's not found out that i guess there's still some things going on with oliver shannon's visa so he's not right. officially on the roster right now but apparently likes the podcast <laughs> <laughs> that was uh that was absolutely hilarious <laughs> me get i get that reply or i get that that note on twitter there's <laughs> a photo of jack mm-hmm with what is this his handles undies sports something yeah, like that yeah, something like that yeah. photo of him and oliver shannon saying <laughs> something to the effect of you know catching up with him because he's i guess oliver shannon's back in liverpool right now the undies right. team is yeah the, the undies team that's yeah. what it was photo of the two and um he says huge fan of the podcast. what does he say something about him being a huge fan of the podcast so we thought he was joking but it turned yeah, yeah he's like met up with a buddy of mine number 29 Whenever he's back home, he's apparently serious? he's a big man of the show. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah Kevin, I almost Kevin, fainted. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin proceeded to hyperventilate at work. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the notification. Tim texted me and he goes, you need to go look at Twitter. And I said, why? And he goes, just make sure you're sitting down. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And I was getting off the elevator in the lobby and I saw it and I literally sat down in the chair <laughs> to take a moment to gather myself. <laughs> Yeah, how do you, how does it feel that your greatest hero is British? I told him that he can have whatever visa or membership you have to this country. <laughs> so you're not as, as so. Where do those discriminatory lines lay in England? Who hates the Scousers? Um, is it is it Cockneys that hate the Scousers? Or? I think it's anyone who's had their car stolen. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. That's usually the comments. Uh, no, in Daily I mean, Mail. We, you, I mean, it's you know, like I'm sure that. Um, animosity between like them and people from Manchester because they're so close. Um, yeah, uh, and Northwest, Liverpool, Man yeah. United supporters, and that. I mean, it seems like Scousers hate themselves. You know, like with Everton and Liverpool. Yeah, it's true. Just the, like the quote unquote friendly rivalry. It's not that friendly though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't was... think anyone really hates them as a as a generic faction. Yeah. So, huh. I was just wondering. I mean, I've met a lot of people from London or South England who 
would just like to cut off England below Birmingham and push that out to sea. So, I mean, there are some douchebags like that, but, you know, they voted for Brexit, so... What you gonna do then? All right. Well, we're gonna steer away from politics right now. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's the best. Last thing we need after that loss is to to get into a heated political debate. But so, Houston, where should we stop? Okay. I don't. I don't well, know. I the reason why I had said the stuff prior to is because we expected a lineup change. Yeah, I think that was. I think that's the best way to start is with the lineup. What we what we were expecting to see going because you did a full on analysis and diagram which missed a couple of arrows in the opposite direction that's which true. I pointed that's out true. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you also called it the Gaza you didn't put an R in there uh, well it's not well he wouldn't he, Gaza strip. Would, he wouldn't pronounce it he <laughs> oh, would, it would sound the same the Gaza strip <laughs> yeah um, yeah so we expected to see some lineup changes my thought and and what I had posted was I know everybody was really expecting to see Carlton and wanted to see him come in finally. And that was his time to step up. But I genuinely thought that we'd end up seeing Vialba on the left and then Gressel on right and keep Almarone in yeah. the 10. <clears throat> uh, I didn't expect Tata to step outside the box. That hasn't been his MO out of the first season uh he only showed it during open cup play or some in the preseason so that's what i was expecting i didn't expect much other than that i thought one thing that was surprising was i didn't realize that parker still wasn't going to be game ready so right. I, I yeah i definitely did not anticipate seeing lorena what's back it was yeah a, I I thought he was it was a heat of the columbus game in terms of parkhurst right right because he's fine as a substitute i guess he just wasn't ready for the full 90 Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry, I cut you no, off. No, I was I was surprised to see uh, Lorena was in the back line over Parkhurst. Um, I was surprised to see. I was surprised to see Gressel in the ten. I thought he would just slot out on the left, uh, even though that's I'm not sure he's played left wing. It feels like he's played every other position except for that one and striker. Um, I was. So I thought Lorenowitz would play in place of McCann and Parkhurst would be there, but obviously mm-hmm. that didn't happen. Um, I felt like the game was summed up to me was someone passed the ball back to Gazan in the second half and he passed it to Jeff Lorenowitz. But instead of going to Jeff Lorenowitz, it just rolled out for a corner. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty much the game. I feel like <laughs> there was that there was a lot of those. It was like <laughs> PK it's the post. <laughs> right. <laughs> and nobody, nobody ran in for the rebound. No. They were just like Oh, oh, that happens fuck. sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it worrying at all with that penalty? Just it does. It, it's 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 one thing. His placement, if it's an into inside, it's perfect placement. You can't place a penalty better than that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to the point of following up on that, does is that worrying at all that we're still not practicing on on penalties? That yeah. nobody's reaction times or even their their thought they don't have the forethought to to say. I think it's bigger than just penalties i think this team has consistently struggled on set pieces and that even goes for our own penalties i mean it, it does i mean i would consider a, a pk a set piece would you not yeah no it is yeah. so i think that that probably did, a lot of that even goes back to what tata's after game interview was was that he thought the reason for this loss was possession and passing which i didn't think that was the case at all like it seemed much more positional awareness that led to that downfall. If you actually look at the stat sheet, Atlanta actually maintained larger possession and higher passing accuracy. That was not the issue. It was a positional awareness and following through with that on defense specifically that led to that loss as well as just boneheaded mistakes whenever opportunities we had up top. Well, yeah, I mean, the two guys that came from mistakes, so Perez and Guzan, and then the other one that came from mistake was Vialba crossing it. Uh, was I'd say <laughs> Almarone twice. I mean, I think the PK over. not being on frame. I mean, Actually, again, so to we, that, and then him not using his fucking right foot. I can't say it enough. That was but, just a yeah. shining example of how hesitant he is to even touch the ball with his right foot. I just wanted to say we have a new listener who or a new viewer that just actually corrected us on the the penalty miss. So. He's right. We're not allowed to touch that ball until it hits a person, right? Until somebody from the opposite team hits it. Mm. Isn't that correct? 
Because it's indirect at that point, right? Oh, I guess it's different than like a basketball rebound for a free throw. Anybody, I believe that touch he is. I believe that he is correct in that. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Yeah, because usually it bounces off the keeper whenever somebody rebounds it in. So maybe because I was watching the DC highlights and Maddox got, I guess his penalty got saved, and then they all tried to bundle in, but mm. they didn't get it. So, so to your point, Kevin, in, in terms of the 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 match, thank you, I'm Ronald. Tr- trying to find, so we had, I mean, we had sixty percent possession. I don't think possession's really that big. Again, we have 50, 59% 59% possession. and 85% yeah. passing accuracy. The yeah, possession so, and passing was not the downfall of this. No, game. it was the turnovers. And that's, that's the, again, I, and Mills had a great tweet. He said, in Tata, I trust. And to that point, yes, to a certain extent. But all the issues that we've seen and talked about, about his unwillingness to make early substitutions to change the pace of the game, we came about he made an early substitution whenever LGP was forced to make that happen <laughs> because of another stupid mistake. Um, but it was the second time he had fell down, God, clutching his hip. Good lord. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a coaching standpoint, you've got to be a little bit more cognizant of that stuff. So seeing that the passing and passing efficiency and possession was there, that's not the result of why this game was an issue. It's positional awareness and and being in a position to make a play, which is what led to three of those four goals. In my you opinion. know what I'm going to say is in the first 20 minutes, well, I guess first, not first 20 minutes, because when did when did they, Wenger scored their first goal in the 13th? Fifth. Like the fifth. First goal is scored in the fifth. Yep. Or was it the second goal, maybe? Yes. First goal... Second. Goal scored goal in the fifth. In in the fifth, whenever you're right, sorry, LGP it was, it was gets beat, and then Escobar completely leaves his man on the back post, who comes in behind Guzan and has yeah, a sorry. shot on goal. I would say even even without that first goal, I still we were threatening a good bit in oh, the yeah. first in the first twenty minutes of the game. I was like, we're mm-hmm. bound to score. Yeah, we were definitely bound to score, and, and that didn't end up, it did not end up happening. You're right, though. I mean, without those turnovers, this game's completely different on both ends. Did, if we're able to execute better in front of goal we have 13 shots and only i think one two were on frame two on like frame. so yeah. i mean if we you, match their shots if but... you move the tolerances like, like an inch here or there i mean we could have been it could have been three four 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 five four uh you could also adjust those tolerances and it could have been seven nothing too right because exactly. we also got a lot of really lucky breaks on defense mm-hmm. so most of the people in the live chat are talking about the first goal so let's let's give that a shout because uh, actually, no, no, Ronald Pena says, wait, never mind. I was wrong. The penalty kicker has to wait for someone to touch the ball before he can go touch it again. Right, but everybody you know, else can touch right. it after he touches it the first so time. It is, it so is somebody technically- could rush. They can't enter the box until he touches it, but once he does it, it's fair game for anybody else to touch right. it. Right, and it's an indirect free kick, so as soon as he touches mm-hmm. it, somebody else can touch it. That's Ooh, true. has anybody ever done that? Has anybody done like almost like a, a literal set piece where they just roll up, Touch it enough so that somebody, as soon as he's there, somebody comes sprinting up behind him to no, throw everybody off. Because it's it's not smart. I know it's not yeah. smart, but it'd be fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> if you're up, if you're up eight nothing, just be like, let's do this. Yeah, no, not not happening. <laughs> Joe Patrick joining us in the uh, the live chat. The H, one of the H dad dads. He's, I don't think he's a dad though. We're not gonna start yet. calling him the H dads. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah, not yet. He's going to be, though. <laughs> that they know of. Exactly. <laughs> not that the government knows about. <laughs> not that he claims on his taxes. So anyway, so people are blaming multiple people. In actually, Brandon Scott saying Messi did that last year with the penalty. So, Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. He Maybe, got his 600th career goal this weekend, yeah, speaking of which. It was a pretty nice deflected free kick that he scored. It was yeah, nice, though. That, they beat yeah. Atletico 1-0 yep. and just increased that margin on that. Anyway, we're not talking about La Liga. We're talking about the goal that we gave up to Wenger. Uh, I, you had this discussion during the game. So I for, for put me, that goal on Escobar. Okay, so for me, I think it, it lands on two people, and a lot of people might get upset. I think I saw it on the live chat that somebody was saying that they thought that LGP was fouled on that. I don't think that he was fouled. I thought that he was really soft. I think for he a guy, got beat. For a guy that big, granted, Albert Elise is a monster. And that guy's 22 years old. He's going to be playing the World Cup with Honduras, right? He's a fantastic player. He he dominated us more than anybody on that pitch on Saturday. Like oh, he yeah, was absolutely. he was far and away the best player on the field the entire day. And he threw LGP like a ragdoll in a completely legal 50-50 challenge. 
and then he just slotted it into the into the into the box. And you're right. I do blame Escobar for this goal. He doesn't get goal side on it. And but at the same time, he's put in a really awful position by well, some really soft defending well, by LGP. Where, where, so yeah, LGP did terrible defending on that and shouldn't have allowed Elise to get that. Why much is free he that space. far on the wing? Because LGP. Because, because right. I guess because Garza's because, pushed up so no, no, far. Because no, so they'd pushed up. Lorenowitz was supposed to be the middle guy. Escobar was right on an island for pretty for a lot of the game. And Lorenowitz, Lorenowitz really pissed me off this game because there were a number of times where the ball is rolling past him and he is not. He's just watching the ball go past. If he oh, had dude, been yeah. a, at least Escobar tried to run and sort of recoup something before the goal, the ball went in the back of the net. But Lorenowitz didn't do anything. The same that. The same thing that, so people are saying McCann was the best rated player. So if you look at who scored and see all the stats, yes, him and Martinez and Lorenowitz are our best players with 6.5 ratings. However, I didn't hear McCann's name called very much at all. There's a and the thing is, when you are winning and you don't hear someone like Carmona's it, name, that's what the point I was going to make, exactly. That, because Carmona is doing his job. But when you are getting thrashed and you're not hearing your defensive midfielder's name, where the fuck are you? Right, right. Because you're not doing your job. I counted like three or four times where he's watching the ball rolling past. He's not coming back to defend fast enough. He's just jogging around. And on two of the goals... The ball went past him, and it went past Lorenowitz, and it went in the back of the net. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit irritated with, with people coming in and saying, "Oh, McCann was the best player." Yeah, you can be the best one covered in shit, but you're still covered in shit. Wait, I'm, I didn't see who was calling McCann our best I've, player. I've had a bunch of people on. Twitter I thought he was god awful. I think uh, shout out to Tiro Football for the. the I th I'm pretty sure it was him. Is either him or Joe Patrick for putting that heat map. And I think the similar game from last year against Houston, yeah. seeing Carmona and Lorenowitz the way that they covered and controlled the field and their area of play was pretty much straight across or straight across. Yes. Yeah. And then if you look at Nagby and, and, and McCann, it's, 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 a, it's a big hook to the left. Just yeah. Keep doing and, the th and then we saw that if you see <laughs> the average positions of the players, Escobar is on an island all the way out on the right, and everyone else is packed over on the left. There's right. a huge fucking hole where the Renowitz is supposed to be. So there is a point to that. I mean, with Escobar losing his man, if you really look at why he lost his man, it wasn't just... I mean, it was a little bit of a lack of awareness of the guy on the back post, but it was also him trying to cover the guy on front post because nobody was he really did get stuck on an island there to your right. point so <laughs> he wasn't getting the support so how right. can he he's not been put in a position but at that for point, success right at the same time though he's got to cover back post because at, at that point guzan is essentially covering front post and, he, right. and and nobody's on the back post and he's got to kind of be aware of that so i still i'll stand with it but at the same time i can see where there's a little bit of a gray line there and ultimately three of those four i think the second goal was gorgeous the second goal is the header that comes in another set piece that we're just don't really seem to have the size and if they've got a tall forward that can get above the line they seem to expose it any team that we play that can do that um third goal another positional awareness like Zan just gets off of his line and isn't covered and doesn't get back and he punches it out and isn't able to get back in time for them to just slot it right through yeah, that was weird yeah uh correction so, sorry joe patrick th the humble man won't take credit for that he's saying it was pacing pacing schwinn Pace Nino that tweeted out that heat map uh, comparing the two games from last year and this year. Just want to give credit where credit's due. So, go, sorry, going back to that, if you're, you've are you got to be aware of where your attackers are. And what we did really well as a defensive unit last year was able to swarm back. And, In, and we it, did it, not at, do that. At times. There were times last year where the defense got exposed where yeah. there was a cluster of people inside the box early on and again counter when people would get stuck on an island and not make the appropriate decision on who they should really be covering right. rather than covering one like even if you want to make the argument that escobar is covering the guy on the front post he isn't really even goal side on him like yeah. he ultimately gets stuck in between He's, both of them exactly. and doesn't commit to either that's if he point. at least commits to the front one he may as an cut it off before it even gets to the back mm -hmm. post but because he doesn't do that and doesn't have that positional awareness it just slots right through, and he doesn't even get the chance to make a play on the ball. Right, so. exactly. So at that point, you're looking for those 
those defensive midfielders to pony up and maybe do a little bit of running. I'm not saying that Shannon could have kept this from happening, <laughs> but I'm not not saying that Shannon. No, I mean, and, and it's happening. honestly a great point. I seen live chat Elliot Beaven saying Kratz should start over McCann, and I don't think that that's the case at all because we've laid out many a time before that Kratz playing along something other than a defensive midfielder in the center of the park is not great. I, th I believe that th that's what happened in DC whenever we went up to RK yeah. last year, whenever Carmona was in or not injured. I think he had a, did he have a suspension? So, something like anyway, it was no, maybe it was him in, sorry, I'm, I'm losing track. I want to say it was Carmona and Kratz playing together. They didn't have Lorenowitz giving yeah. them cover. Yeah. Right. Oh, I hate so, that. you say Shannon, but I, and I hate to keep harping on this and it sucks that he didn't get any more play time aside from a few minutes at the end of the Charleston game and outside of the Nashville game for 30 minutes. But Chris Goslin has got to be a better option than Chris McCann in the middle of the park. He, right, so, he, he, he is Chris McCann is not a number six by trade. He's not a defensive midfielder by trade. I don't know what he is by trade. He's a makeshift left back. And I thought he, and we've sung his praises all last year, whenever he was playing left back after the, after the maybe the first half of the Orlando game, but he is not somebody who can control the front of the the front of the front of the back four. Do we have a right back? Uh, Zizzo. Yeah, Zizzo. So that's so. That's, what do we think about this week? Yeah, we we push Lorenowitz up. Well, yeah, push Lorenowitz yeah. up. Put Lorenowitz Lorenowitz Escobar is Escobar's naturally a center, right? Uh, I think he's naturally a right back who can play center back as opposed to the other way around that Anton walks was. He's like the reverse of Anton. Because Walks. we got to, we got to replace LGP this week. That seems to make the most sense though, to pull him in center and then putting Zisso on right so that Lorenowitz can shift up because I agree like McCann is just not providing anything on a consistent basis to where we need, yeah. because Escobar is usually a CB. Yeah. So we can't, we're not going to rely at this point in time. And I didn't expect to this past week for Tata to make game changing decisions early on. It's few and far between. So you just hope that those decisions are being made earlier than right at the start of the game. And all preseason, we talked about Atlanta's depth, Atlanta's depth, Atlanta's depth. And here we are second game of the season. And we have <laughs> yeah. LGP and Barco out and we've got to come up with some solutions. You know, so, we, we talked about during the preseason that we thought that we had great depth, but we did point out the, the dearth of options at center back. And that's going to be, be a huge issue for us. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, surely we're, Escobar is going to take um, LG's, uh, one of the defensive the center backs. But I mean, maybe McCann slots in as one of those center backs. And then the Ren so no, McCann and Renowitz. No, no. <laughs> but it's not. It's, McCann, he's not McCann can't I'm sorry McCann cannot play a actual responsible defensive position <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry it's fine if you want to push him up if it, I'd rather him push up where now no, push I'd push him back no I he, he's he's naturally he should naturally be back more than up I agree with that yeah Dan but to Tim's point I also don't trust him anywhere except for left back if you're gonna pull him back I wouldn't put him at center back so so what you're gonna do okay so if McC if you're taking McKenna right you're pushing Lorena it's up the six you pull in Escobar back and you put in Zizzo on the right correct so who's your other center back Parker other center backs Parker oh, so I think Parker is getting ready. ready I mean I think he's gonna have to be if he's if he's substitution he's ready he's gotta question. be in there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> because because idiot. to be honest so in hindsight it's always 2020 right if you're Tata and you know that Parker's can only play a half wouldn't you rather in in hindsight would you rather have trotted him out in the first half and then subbed him out after halftime. I'm sorry. What I, was, I said, if you're DP, yeah. Or, or, sorry, if you're if you're Tata Martino on on Saturday, mm -hmm. do you sit no. in, in hindsight? Do you no. sit McCann, push Lorenowitz up, play Parkhurst no. for a half? No. Alongside LGP. No. Why? Because in in hindsight, because Parkhurst, even in hindsight, you're you're risking the fact that it's still a close game, and you're risking worsening an injury in the second half because you can't logistically pull him off because you're either fighting to maintain a slight lead, maintain a draw, or maybe they're still up. I, I, I'm not a fan. I'm a bigger proponent of 
putting somebody in in the second half as an adjustment rather than in the first half with the hope that you'll be in a position to take him off. Right. Because that could, you'd just sub him off. Exactly. Like does, in does five anybody, minutes into the game. Exactly. Does, does anybody know Parkhurst's injury? Do you even know that he's still, he's not injured though? No, he I just, mean, it's the same thing. I mean, somebody in live chat, I think it was uh, Josh was asking, do we have any update on LGP's injury? MLS, no, we, we have so few. No, we, we have, have to, so little information on injury reports in MLS. It seems all we know is that it's a know. hip contusion and it's an indefinite injury that we don't know when he might be back. Doesn't it kind of concern you though that if it was something easy, they would have diagnosed it by now and exactly. probably would have put something out? Exactly. But we are two. Oh yeah, two days, two whole days removed from it. Well, at the same time, we got something. Um, I mean, it can't be. We we heard it was a hip contusion. But well, if they it was just something like throwing, they could be just throwing something out. That's true. But if it was something like, I mean, Martinez was out for exactly. ten weeks, they and we still got off. something, and we're not—we still got some sort of update. So it's not going to be anything. It's not like he tore his fucking ACL or something. No, like but that. we. But it was a it was he, a he, while before we got Martinez's information. I, he's not be. out. He's not listed on the unavailable or injury report on fantasy league. Be, so there is that. He damn, is still okay. available on fantasy. Mm -hmm. Well. For what it's worth, I don't know. There, there couldn't be a more va there could be a more vague injury, but a a varying injury as a bruise. He's got a hip bruise, whether that's a bones, whether kidney that's, bruise, yeah. or <laughs> right. It's 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 a contusion in his hip, so that's just it's just a bruise. But a bone bruise can keep you out for six, eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on how deep that bruise really got. He looked like he was really writhing. Can we talk about how he got that injury for a second? Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Take because it in a in a game where we're talking about stupid boneheaded mistakes or not having a positional awareness, I understand LGP wanting to make a statement, be there, and more times than not, he toes the line really well. And it, whenever it's it's one of those things like when it works, great. But when it doesn't, it's glaringly obvious that it doesn't. And that foul that he ends up getting the injury was one of those cases where. He could have played that a million other different ways rather than just putting him, not only just making a blatant foul, but putting himself in a position to get injured was just another indicator of just how bad that game went for Atlanta Saturday. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that's that's kind of the good thing about it. Like, I compare it to the the New York City game we played on the road last year. Everything went wrong. Everything, it was just... It was just a shit show, and it's kind of good that we, you know, the team realized it was a shit show. Like, hopefully, that I'd rather will... that happen now than when playoffs are on the line. Absolutely. freaking I mean, the, the look, the ships, the ship, the ship, the ship's not sinking. We, it's the first game. We lost our first game last year, guys. I mean, it's the first game. I think Garza even said something to that effect after the game. Yeah. Said every season has one of these games where you just want to move on and forget about it. Yeah. This is that game. We're going to move on and try to forget about it. The the problem I have, and I think what everybody wants to see, is how they move on and forget about it, considering the depth challenges that Atlanta is now facing, not knowing, is Tata going to step up and make adjustments in the lineup prior to the start of the game? I mean, we're, he's obviously not going to do it mid-game, but is he going to make a lineup change that's significant to start the game to put Atlanta in its real best position that overlooks the shortcomings of players that we've seen time and time again. Yeah. I don't know. Hashtag play your kids. I think that's definitely somewhere we can start last night. You see 17 year old Alfonso Davies who can be likened to the Canadian Andrew Carlton starting for the best team in the West, scoring a goal and just making an immediate impact. It's a cascade of things, right? And Jay, I, I do want to say, I know Jay, Jay, our buddy Jay Riddle put into the live chat, or is, is anybody going to try and talk us off the ledge and make us feel okay? Absolutely. We are. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But I will say that the tactics on Saturday, he was limited in his options. I'll give you that because he's not going to play his kids. If he doesn't play Goslin, then he doesn't have the ability to... I, he has to deal with McCann being positionally unaware the entire game. And then with that, you have Lorenowitz in a center back position, which we've said year over year so far, he is not a center back. And I'll say that over and over and over and over again until I'm blue in the face. We've seen nothing but trouble whenever he's had to step back and only play center back. He, he, well, he, he gets away with ball watching 
because typically whenever he's playing center defense mid, because he's really not, he's, he's providing cover. He's, he's but, staggering that, that offense as the defense is being able to come up or he's covering and coming back for LGP. Right. So it's, it, it's strange to me that when he starts as a CB, he, it's terrible. But when he starts at that, that six and drops into the CB role, then it he's a lot notice. better. Yeah. It's, it's because of this. I think he gets comfortable whenever he's playing center back, playing on that line. And whenever he's playing uh, up, he, he knows, know, he knows yeah, right, especially, right. He has to. especially yeah. with as adventurous as LGP gets, he knows that he has to stay on his toes because he's going to have to be shifting forward and backwards. He doesn't have to move too much laterally, but he does right. have to move forward and backward. He can't stay on that line and then get caught on his heels ball watching so, like he did during two of the goals. So let me pose another caveat to that then. Is this an issue with Lorenowitz or with the system in place because what I'm hearing you say is Lorenowitz is okay in center mid because he's got Parkhurst and LGP backing him up. He's able to shift and move forward and backwards again, or does it go back to the shortcomings in McCann rather than Lorenowitz in that Lorenowitz knowing he's the last line of defense, it's almost a hesitancy for him to move forward because he doesn't know that McCann is going to track back or trust him or whatever that issue may be. So he ends up getting stuck there without moving forward or having the variability to move around on the field like he would in midfield. I, I think it's a combination of both because of those Escobar's things. not going to come over to cover him. Well, you know, we saw that happen. I, there, there are players that are good in a single position. They do exist. Not everybody can be a Swiss Army knife for Tata. And as much as I love the defensive cover that Jeff Lorenowitz gives, I think it's just limited. I think he's limited to that number six role, and I think that's about that's about it. Especially this at this age, he's 34, 35 years old. I think he's fine. He's not, my every, age. not everybody, <laughs> not everybody can be Javier Mascherano, where he can play. <laughs> he could be the best center defensive mid in the world, and then also be a, a world class center back at the same time. Or Carlos Puyol. I mm -hmm. mean, we as much as we want to play like Barcelona, we can't play like Barcelona because <laughs> not everybody is a midfielder. With that, I think McCann is part of the issue. I think he's out of position. I think both of those players are out of position. Yeah. And you fix that. And you've seen how much one player being out of position affects every other player around him. Right. And you're and you're right. If and I think honestly, I think Lorenowitz would have been okay if Goslin would have been playing in place of McCann. And I I hundred percent believe my I, I believe my my believe own, own hype. I'm buying that <laughs> buying that hype that I'm putting putting out there for Chris Goslin because one, he's young. He's going to want to make a name for himself, but two, he's not going to want to piss off the coach enough to be that adventurous. I think he would be covering th that back line. And I think he would give Lorenowitz a little sense of security that McCann wasn't giving him going in a diagonal pattern across the field. Anyway, hashtag play your kids. So. <laughs> and we see a lot of that. I mean, if, if it's not Goslin, the other consistent name that comes up is Carlton. Whether or not we're going to see Carlton this Saturday or not, it seems to be the same suggestion. Do we put Carlton on the left? I think Eric made a good point last week on the show. I think Carlton is far more suited at this juncture to be on the left than in the 10 slot. Um, I would put, if, if Carlton is going to come on, that's where I would prefer to see him at. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, you got to put him in a position to succeed. you exactly. got to play his comfortable position. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Everybody, and, and we're going to talk about some negative stuff, I understand, but everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine. Because yeah. I think it's one game. despite how much Twitter blew up with everybody played their worst game that we've ever seen them play, I don't know that's necessarily true. Because This was bound to happen. Like This is the worst loss that Atlanta fans or Atlanta United fans have had to see this team take. And, and with that, you saw a lot of positive signs. At least I did. I think there were definitely glimmers of hope spread right. throughout there, including the first... 20 minutes when we were on the cusp of scoring multiple goals. Right. I don't think it's Almiron's worst game, despite the fact that he scuffed a shot off of his left foot as opposed to cupping his right foot around that ball and just knocking it in. Or, I don't know, just some of some of his movement was not great. But I will say that he had worse games last year when he was forced just to go to the left side. Agreed. Where, where they, they marked him out of the game they it, shut him down at any time he tried to move. But again, that might just be as a response to him being stuck on the left side to begin with. So he couldn't, he wasn't moving left to right. That's true. Okay. So moving forward, I think some good signs to take away from this. I thought that in the first, I don't know, again, first 20, 30 minutes, I thought Tito and Joseph were playing well up front yeah. on, on the right. Uh, I think there were definitely some promising signs there, especially Tito, I think, is still shaking off some rust. 
Justin Martinez is not going to miss the shots that he missed on Saturday. I, I, I mean, I don't think that's going to stand this year. <laughs> he goes that, for him. Yeah, so, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> What's that? that? Was well, that no, just that one attempt that was completely uncharacteristic of him. Uh, Almiron hits in a perfect cross, and Martinez just doesn't go for it. It's like he stops right before the ball sails past him. It was very strange. Uh, Brian Diefenbach, we're talking about Tata is responsible for this. Like that's my whole point. Yeah, tactically, he is. He knows who everybody, where everybody belongs. Where Where you been at, fool? I talked about that to begin with. He (laughs) he said the issue was possession and passing. That's not the issue. Look at the stat sheet. We're good. Um, It's whether or not we see him adjusting moving forward, and I will move forward with the assumption that he will not. So what? What keys do we have in place? Uh, We can talk about it later in the lineup. I'll bring it back up. Tim, you're right. There was some good to be seen, and I think that my issues are more with the defense than the offense, and I think that they're all correctable mistakes. It's not Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something that I see being a long-term issue that's correctable. Um, I think we saw a little bit of what we saw out of Escobar with Walks whenever Walks came in early last season where he lost his man in some of that shuffle tracking from right towards center as the, as the line DC, was starting yeah. to shift over to the wing. Um, so I think some of those things will start to remedy themselves. Again, it's whether or not it happens in time, and we'll see how that lineup changes to accommodate that. But I thought Escobar had an okay game. I thought that he was left hung out to dry a few times. I, yeah, think, it's, I, I, th- I, think, it's, I think it's definitely a little unfair. I think LGP should have known better not to be as adventurous knowing that he doesn't have that calming, positionally aware. I hate keeps. I hate to keep harping on that. He didn't have that partner that in Parker said he does on the field on Saturday in Lorenowitz. He should have known to not be as adventurous in the first 20, 30 minutes of the game, even in the first five minutes. Well, well the thing is, they did what NYCFC did. They came out and they punched us in the mouth as soon as you go, and then they just kept trying to do that for the rest of the 90 minutes when they did it successfully. And I believe other teams have done that to us before last season. Um, so if they're going to be aggressive and at least an LGB gave as good as they got to each of them, I think at least actually need him in the back at one point. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, maybe that uh, rolled into LGP's injury, but he was, I don't think he had a choice. He just needed to nail that guy back. Well, it was one of uh, some of that's on the ref too. I, I hate to blame well, the Alan ref. For, uh, yeah, I hate to see the Alan ref. Chapman. Yeah, I hate to blame any outcome on the ref, but it, the glaringly obvious thing there is the lack of VAR or review or card given whenever Martinez gets taken out in the box. So Dan, we had somebody correct us uh, again. Name escapes me. Uh, it, for me, that's a sending off. Oh, that, yeah. Because the, it was a denial of a goal scoring opportunity. Yeah, 100%. And in the replay, if you would have gone back, if Alan Chapman would have gone back and watched the video or listened to his VAR, he would have been able to see that. What's his name? Because it's it wasn't uh, it was Sites that was playing. Yeah, the goalkeeper. Yeah. I guess he had, uh, he ended up getting a yellow card. It looks like. Yeah, that's, he got a yellow card for time wasting. Okay, the, okay, that's. I, I missed that. It was part, strange, I guess. actually, because if if you're given a penalty, it's because of the foul. Correct. Right. There's there's no there's no other reason for that. And in looking at the replay, his hands come out when the ball's away from him. Mm-hmm. He's looking at the man. He looks nowhere near the ball. Yeah. Well, Smoke and Joe Martinez was actually. I think he'd flip the ball out to go try and go around him. He yeah. did. Yeah. He he shot it out to the right after he started lunging. Yeah. Or no, before he started lunging, I think. And anyway, it was definitely to me that's a sending off in any other league. I was told True. I was told on Twitter that rule changes in MLS a few years ago mean that's not it not a sending off and it's a yellow at best, which is silly to me because if a center back commits the same foul a goalkeeper behind him, it's a sending off. But if a goalkeeper does that knowing that the goal is wide open it somehow is not. Regardless of what I it think sh- we do well, have what the two call... shots on target then, so it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> regardless of which way it goes by the book, that's the that is one of those instances where that's what VAR exists for. Yeah, uh, I think Rainish got sent off for that. Yeah, he absolutely did. It was on the top of the box, and that was Against a little bit further. Minnesota. Back. 
and that's whenever Tim Back has had to exactly, come in. Exactly, exactly. Kevin's. No, so again, point. let's be positive. Yeah, I, th- I think, honestly, if we would have scored that penalty, we're the type of team that could have mounted a comeback. Being down three goals, I, I think because I it would have been early in the second half, I, I can maybe hope on optimism that we would have made it at least competitive, but yeah. I don't know. But I, I kind of, even when we were three goals down, I was kind of expecting us to still go for it. But, and then I thought, then we went four guys, like, well, we'll probably just fuck it. Just once throw that it. PK fell, it was over. It was I mean, over. that you could see the entire team shut down. And I think but that's part of what the half, issue is. Was exactly. Like, just, I, there was, there let's wasn't just get as out much of this. fight. And, and so that's a point. I, I saw somebody, uh, Brendan Scott mentions that even though we lost the first game last year, it still felt like a win because you saw moments of brilliance. I think, if you reflect on the first half of this game, which is what I think this game was played in, there wasn't really much that took place in the second half on either side. It seemed like both teams were comfortable right. to just let it lie. I think that there were those moments for Anna, um, and, and some of the shortcomings, I think, will work themselves out. But there were moments where you saw opportunity being created, and that's with players not in their natural position. I can't state enough how detrimental it is not having players where they're supposed to be. You mentioned it with McCann, also with Al Marone. I mean, it's not just Gressel in the 10 slot. That also Wait, means... did he play on Saturday? Gressel? Yeah. Yeah, he played in the 10. Uh, right? <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> Sarcasm went right over Kevin's head. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, you, you could have fooled me. I didn't see him out on the pitch again, at all. Again, he, he, was, he was slow. But all of that stuff... That is not his position. Two different things being shaken up. So Almiron not being in the ten, McCann not being naturally in center mid, Lorenowitz not naturally being on center back, and not having somebody there to back him up with McCann. All of those things, Escobar still getting a feel for it. The things that we did see that we're used to seeing worked well. Vialba looked okay with Martinez, like you said, early on in the second half. We saw some of that. I thought Nagby looked okay. God, that dog fart stinks. Yeah, we have our oh, first oh, God that damn is it. awful. Our first official Pirlo fart Whoa. gas out. <laughs> he's got bad he's got bad gas. He uh, Did you eat farts for breakfast, Pirlo? Yeah. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Oh my god! I feel like I'm eating it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh. Yeah. So Richard Gordon brings up a good point in the in the live chat. He says since since September, we have looked anemic. He's worried. Are you guys worried? Maybe that's on his thoughts on the game. Maybe that's really yeah. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, and he also just chimed in, blame the dog for the the performance <laughs> on Saturday. Yeah, Pirlo is always to blame for that sort of thing. Are you worried about our anemia on offense? No. No. Because not, not whenever we have our healthy lineup as it should be. And yeah. I think that we'll see a little bit uh, not soccer specific. I'm looking forward to seeing Atlanta back in the bins, back on back on the turf. I mean, yeah. do you remember how alive they looked those games in the bins when they could play with that pace because of the turf? Yeah, I mean, the f- there's a lot of pace. We exactly. Put, we, didn't we go like 20 goals to three or something? Yeah, that little it was switch? something ridiculous. I mean, we yeah. didn't put seven on New England, so there's that. <laughs> um, I'm not worried about it because I feel like we could have we could have scored four goals in that game, at, at some, you know, on a, another day. I think the swing could have been either way. You're right. Yeah. And because of the lineups, I, I mean, my biggest concern about the lineup now that Saturday's over is how is it going to change moving Forward with LGP out. Do we have all right? So we talked about Almarone's uh stuff. We talked about tough breaks up top. Um, I think I don't really have any other comments on um on the Houston game. game. Do you guys no, I'm I'm good to push forward. It it was <laughs> it was a very like fortunate goal that Yamil Assad scored on Saturday. Can we at least say that? Did it did you guys see it? Oh yeah, yeah. The freaking the freaking just, free they just happened goal. to snake through everybody. Yeah, to the point where one of his own guys thought he, he got the goal, had redirected yeah. it. Yeah, it's good to see him on the score sheet. Still love the guy to death. Him. I'm happy for him. But on Sunday, he is enemy. I I really hope, and I I would definitely urge you guys. I have him on my team. Me too. <laughs> despite despite the the reports that it was him not 
you know, he was asking for too much money. Take that, put that aside. Really want to encourage everybody who put listens or watch that, put it aside. And on Sunday, give the man a standing ovation whenever he's announced for, for DC because Absolutely. he gave yeah. his heart and soul and blood, sweat, and tears for this club last year. And, and I think he deserves all of that. Funny enough, first goal of the season for two different teams in back-to-back seasons. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, it, it is cool. And, and maybe we can sign him next year. When, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but on Sunday, he's going to be enemy. I mean, uh, he's, he's never going to be as much of an enemy as Luciano Costa is to me, but the, the little guy is just, he just. So before, yeah. before we get to talk, because we're going to talk extent, a little bit about Sunday. Um, we have been doing the score predictions here. Dan, did you know anybody? Nobody predicted a four. No. I think the closest was Jay Riddle predicting two, two one. Loss. So <laughs> we, he, he's we, just trying to be contrary. We had the reverse yeah. of that. Nick Pugnall from Sydney 17 said, for nothing Atlanta. It was a reverse yeah, of that. So. Exactly. Um but why, why you gotta be like that, Catherine D. Bridges? Getting Trifling. ahead of call on this is gonna score the first goal in Mercedes. Why Trifling. why you gotta be that way? Trifling. Why you gotta troll us? <laughs> why you gotta troll me? I'm wearing his freaking jersey. <laughs> why you gotta troll me? <laughs> um we we've been doing score predictions. We have set up a new system so that you guys can do that along with the fantasy league, which we're going to have a guest spot on and a gift thing. Uh, we're doing a giveaway for the winner of score predictions at the end of the season. So for I think somebody that gets the most yeah. of them, right. And we've set up a new link. If you want to. Yeah. Get home before dark.com forward slash predictions. Really all I, uh, I, the website is nothing but redirects at this point. Yeah, but it's just it, it makes our life a hell of a lot easier. So yeah. um, you guys can say them in the live chat if you want to. But if you go there and put them into the form, it actually populates our spreadsheet for us. And we'll keep track of that every week. So uh, get home before dark forward slash predictions. And we have a listener submitted discussion topic, but we're running close on time. Yeah. Oh, so wait, I before say- I get off of predictions, put in your real name and a real score prediction because it's going to carry over every week and that's what we're going to be tracking. Just troll Kevin. Just or troll you Kevin. can just troll me and your submission will be deleted like the other ones were. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 you're like spiting. You're the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> you're spiting nobody but yourself at that point because you're missing out on the prize package. So we're going to give away at the end of the year. We're going to figure out a point system anyway. I think we're just going to go with a point for getting the yeah, that's getting the score way. correct. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, good to me. that's how we go with it. Right, and we'll figure out tiebreakers oh, if we get to that point. We do have a user submitted topic. I don't. Know, you guys didn't put it in the the you notes. You guys have fun with that. What was it? We'll. I think oh yes. We'll discuss it. I think. We want to table it till next I think week. we'll table it till next week because we're running out of time. Sorry, it's from Sam Langford over in the UK. We'll we'll table that until next week. Oh, we'll tweet it out too. So how about this? We'll table it. The 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 Twitter audience doesn't know about it, but you can set it up, and then you guys can tweet us your responses. We'll talk about it. Uh, yeah. Talk about it next week. Yeah. Uh, Bo David's asking if he gets points for his twenty six to twenty three prediction last week. Only if you can count the twenty seven, bro. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Some tells me that ain't happening. <laughs> So coming in on Sunday, we got our arch nemesis, DC United, into yep. the Benz. Yamil Assad coming back. First game at home this year. What are you guys expecting? Because we're definitely going to have to move people around. I expect to see Assad score a goal. I, I genuinely do. I think he is going to come in and play with a chip on his shoulder. And and Katie said it. If it's not, his, if it's not the first goal, I, I, I expect to see him score this weekend. At least have opportunities to. I think that we will have a little bit of trouble with that front. The triple eight, triple A attack and threat. Yeah, because they have a lot of speed, a lot of creativity between the three of them, a lot of ball control, and then you have Patrick Mullins up front, who's supposed to have a breakout year with the three of those guys behind him, giving him service. Especially if Garza gets overstretched on the right. On the left, you mean? Or, well, yeah. yeah, on the left. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, I got. I'm like twisted around. I'm like trying to see who's going to be defending Assad on the left, and then that would be our. Yeah, um, yeah. If Garza gets, because Garza would be defending him on that side, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If it gets overstretched, and they get that quick counter. No, he's gonna. No, yeah, no. Garza's Escobar's gonna be going. Escobar's gonna be Escobar. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hopefully Sorry. not. Hopefully it's gonna be Zizzo right? against Assad. Mm-hmm. But we, you'll see, you'll see okay, Garza. Yeah. Garza's, right. Garza's gonna be guarding uh, Paul Ariola. 
Yeah. And, and I think he's going to have trouble with him if he gets a same, same, same thing, Kevin, if he, if he overexerts him or over stretches himself on the left side of the True, field. But, right. but Gaz is fast and he, him yeah. and Ariel are about the same. So, so I, I so. want to go ahead, despite all the McCann, I don't know, slander that we've had throughout the show and in the live chat, I want to throw this out McCann. And I think for this reason, I think McCann, we could put over on left mid or left wing. Mm hmm. No, I'm 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 being a hundred percent honest. Continue. Oh, you gonna Just, put Garza up top on left wing? No, I want to put Garza back so he doesn't. He's not. But and if he bomb, center back, if he bombs forward, you can pull McCann back a little bit. Are you putting him on center back? Because Almiron's not gonna give not gonna give you that same left back defensive cover that McCann's gonna give you. Yeah. So are you putting Garza in center back? Is that what you're saying? No, you're putting Garza at left back. Yeah, and then you, you put McCann, McCann on McCann the on, wing. Oh, you're putting McCann on the wing. Oh, where no. Almiron was, and then you put Almiron back in his number I like ten. That. I don't like that. All right, Almiron's got to go back in his number ten. I agree. Almiron yeah. has got to be in the ten. I agree. I do not like putting McCann on left wing. I don't think that he has, knowing how much of a defensive player he is, and we're talking about him in the midfield. Do you think he's going to be that much of an offensive threat? It seems much more likely to put. Put the Alba on left wing, put Gressel on right wing, and put Almiron back in mid. I'm fine with that too, and I'm also fine with seeing Brandon Vasquez come in. Yeah, I think at this point, to to me, Vasquez over Gressel, but that's a topic that we've Vasquez over Carlton though. That's the real debate, and we posted that. And they play different got, positions. It was neck though. and neck. It was neck and neck. Though, Wait, who did are we you still think? talking about putting them on the left? So you would put no. no. Uh, Vialba on the left, Vasquez oh. on the right. But if you were to leave Vialba on the right, I would put Carlton in on the left. Mm -hmm. Or do you put... Does it make more sense to put Vialba on left to start and then you sub out Gressel later on and then swap him back over to right and put Carlton? I think if Carlton plays, he's coming on as a sub. That's oh, absolutely. He's not going to be He's not gonna be a starter. I don't think so at all. But is 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 Chris Goslin in the eighteen on Sunday? He no. has to be. You say I don't no? think I don't think he will. Right. I don't think he will either. Wait, hold on. Let's think. Let's think. Well, okay, so let's go starting lineup. What do you think? Martinez, obviously. Elmarone, obviously. Um Parkhurst. Are we thinking Parkhurst will start most likely? Garza. Yes. Garza, Escobar, um Guzan. Uh who's who's next to Parkhurst? I think we pull Escobar over and start Zisso on right. Yeah, that's, you, that do, seems to make the most sense. I know that's what you want to do, but if you're, if, is Tata Martino going to do that? Yeah. Yes, See, because I don't, I don't think so. he played Zisso the entire preseason on that wing. The, I know the, Escobar was injured, but he did. He didn't make enough mistakes to warrant him not starting over. I would start him over starting in Goslin or Carlton or Vasquez just because he's at least got enough playtime yeah. and experience to warrant him getting a start on Saturday. I don't think that happens. Joe Patrick with the, the insider knowledge, it's real. I'm probably just not doing my homework saying uh, Goslin was training with uh, Atlanta United too yeah, last I don't, week. Thank, I don't. thank you for the tidbits, Joe. You, you do a fucking fantastic job chiming in whenever we're off on. So stuff. what do you think happens so, on the back line? Let's start, I guess, rather than doing the starting 18, let's just start with our back line. Our, think? I think our back line, the only substitution is you have Parkhurst for LGP. You think LGP is going to be okay to start? No, no, I Parker's said you have four LGP. I'm Parker's saying that four. Parker's oh, comes and in. Right. stays. I see what you're saying. You say so you think Lorenzo's just going to stay? Send him. Send yeah, him I think so. Okay. I think I think as as much as fans, we look at that and we think that he fit for that position. I think that Tata, you've seen him time and time again. Whenever he has to fit somebody into that center back role, he'd rather put Lorenzo's back there. I don't know if he feels comfortable to put Ziz Zizzo. Didn't play any minutes on Saturday, right? I don't think he feels comfortable enough to put Zizzo in a starting role for. Okay. 90 minutes. I, I, I think you've convinced me there. I think Even on the 18, was he? He was, yeah. Was yeah, he? he was. Okay, okay. I think that it's going to be the same, except McCann and Lorenowitz are going to get flipped. I think oh, McCann really? is going to go center back. I think Lorenowitz is going to play in the six. Nagby, the only question I have is who is going to start? I think Tito starts on one wing. And then it's either Vasquez or Gressel on the other. I think it's I think it's Gressel and Gressel on right, Vialba on left, which is what I thought was going to happen mm -hmm. last week. I think you're going. I'm going to say the exact opposite. I think that Gressel really? had such a poor game on oh. Saturday that Vasquez and Vasquez looked okay whenever he came so, in. So, so talking to Gressel, I remember last and I gave him a pretty hard time. Like he just wasn't 
getting stuff together. But Tata stuck with him because I guess either he just wanted to keep the same guys because he's being stubborn, he saw something or whatever. So I I think he's going to go along those lines and yeah. still keep wrestling. Okay, so who do we think is on the bench knowing those lineups? Because I think the I think the parts are all the same where they go, maybe a little bit different. I think mean, Carlton makes the 18 again. I think Zizzo makes the 18 again. And I think that we have to have I think either can I we think Kratz for sure. Yeah. Kratz okay, so, and Williams. Yeah. So can. Yeah. Carlton Williams. Vasquez. Vasquez. Or Vasquez or Gressel, whichever. Um Kratz, uh, So I think Carlton can Zizzo Williams. Kratz and Vasquez. Yeah. Okay, so no changes then. Yeah. In I terms of the so. twenty three or the think, eighteen, sorry. Yeah, I think the eleven yeah. may I shift agree. how we play yeah. them, but I I knowing Tata's resilience to change or hesitancy to change, I, I don't expect it to be right. a drastic one. If anything, maybe we see Kratz over McCann admit if you're gonna keep Larry in the back. What do we know about DC's back line right now? Because they're a team that definitely changed a good bit during the offseason. I will tell you. Uh, as you're pulling that up, I think, um, yeah, they they gave away a pretty shot. They they were pretty bad towards the end of that Orlando game. It real the back line I felt like gave that game away in terms of they lost two points at oh, the very yeah. end of that game. They shouldn't. Yeah, they should have closed that out. They were getting bar- like a barrage from Orlando. Barrage, barrage. <laughs> barrage. So they they played De Leon, brilliant Binbaum, and Fisher. So. How old is Steve Birnbaum at this point? I don't know. But either way, Orm scored rated higher than all of our players. <laughs> Bo David, uh, we agree completely, man. A lot to figure out. First, First couple of yeah. games of a news and relax. Someone said that one time. Can't remember who. Me being a dumb redneck and all. Uh, all so jokes just, aside, I, I, I agree completely. Um, yeah. I, I think we're going to be okay. I guess Birnbaum's just playing, been playing a long time so, as a youngster. He's only 27. Why Take didn't, that back. A, Costa play score predictions us three uh you guys can sound off in a live chat but again you can fill out the form and we'll keep track of them and if anybody gets them right we'll make sure to mention it next week but score predictions for you guys tim what are you thinking this weekend i think it's a three two i think it's i think atlanta squeaks one out at home against dc three to two i am going to say a one one draw i'm going straight ahead punch it in the mouth 3-0 3-0 Atlanta. Oh, fuck off. That's not happening. Why? I just don't see that happening. With the with the issues that we had the first week, I don't see us getting a clean sheet in the second week. I mean, especially just knowing DC had our number all last season. I, I don't see. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that would be great. I'd love it. Yeah, but, okay. Okay. Um, that's it for us. And now the fun part of the show, guys. <laughs> We got six reviews and on the main show, and then we've got one on the follow-up. So the problem you guys have all been waiting for, um, if you want to hear your review read on the show, all you got to do is go to iTunes. And if you don't have iTunes, you can always get a surrogate, as many have done before. Last week, we challenged you guys to leave us reviews and maximize the emoji count because we had so much fun with Dan reading them and you guys did not disappoint. I think we have three reviews specifically for Dan to read uh, that are all emoji. So uh, we'll get to that and then trade off. And what did we get more? There was actually one from Ezeke on the 21st of February that we missed because we weren't looking at the, the network page. God, we are the worst, man. We make all these promises <laughs> and then. Good Lord. Okay. Don't um, even follow wait, me. before we get to this, we did get some stuff in the live chat. Uh, Bo David agrees with you, Dan. 3 1. Um, 3 0. 3 0. Uh, 3 0. I ain't giving him shit. Elliot Beaven <laughs> being real DC United. Uh, win for nothing. Uh, Richard Gordon oh, two God, two. Brittany as two oh. one Atlanta. Brandon Scott hoping for an Asado goal. Yes. Uh, Richard Gordon <laughs> makes a good point. DC is starting seven new players. Craig, CK, we just talked about. Uh, we have a Google form. If you go to gethomebeforedark.com forward slash predictions, it goes into that spreadsheet. Um, we have a two one from Josh Reynolds. DC starting seven new players. That's what Richard Gordon's saying. They're pretty much a yeah. new team. And Josh Busby, 47, uh, uh, 2 1 brace for Joseph. Again, yep. we're not logging points. these things, guys. 
you're on the internet somehow. So go to gethomebeforedark.com forward slash predictions and enter those predictions in there and it will populate a spreadsheet for us. Yeah, apparently if you buy a cap, you get 10 extra fantasy points or whatever. So. Yeah, and you can... Oh, <laughs> that's a great segue into hats. I'm wearing the OG that's not for sale. Oh. Um, run the jewels tonight. But uh, you guys' hats are available in multiple, oh, multiple color variations and styles. Uh, you can go to gethomebeforedark.com forward slash shop to get those yeah and you can also if you guys want to see them test them out we'll be at the game come find us i don't know if we're really going to be up for the tailgate that much but there are going to be plenty of other people at the tailgates that should be rocking them you'll be able to see what they look like in person give you a nice for sure impression okay uh lots of reviews we can't let, we can't have dan read all of the emoji otherwise we're going to be left with almost nothing okay that's true uh, um so tim to that point since you said that why don't you start us off with uh very good. I, I'm on the on the I'm on the main show. I'm gonna get the one that we missed. Which one? From the 21st. This is from the network show. Oh, okay. Go ahead and do yeah, that. Yeah, awesome podcast. Five stars. Easy. We got Peach Peach Soccer Ball Soccer Ball Gold Medal Gold Medal Two Beers One Beer Two Beers <laughs> Bourbon Gold Medal Gold Medal Microphone Half Boat Half. <laughs> Um, that, that's like a yacht. And then that's a tugboat, half tugboat. We got a dollar. We got two flying dollar bills. We got thumbs up, thumb, thumbs up, aubergine. And then we got, but, seri but seriously love listening to this podcast and all of what you have to say. We appreciate you, Ezek. Okay. I'll do the next one because Dan did extensive research for the one that follows. What so. are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, very good by Ron Bon FCB. Uh, five stars out of the 753,485 different Atlanta United podcasts. I chose yours. Smiling, kissing, teethy smile, kissing, smiling. I love you, face, smiling, nerd, smiling, sad, whistling, sad, sweating it out, look of disapproval. <laughs> It's, it's sweating it out really yeah blissful sunglasses angel teethy smiles tongue out elated sunshine Ass in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh blushing kissy huh uh smile sunglasses blushing huh uh joyful tears tongue out googly eyes joyful laugh blushing tongue out joyful laughter x's for eyes judgment face drooling Ron what Shh. Ron ronald pena has it right he says new rule you have to make the faces <laughs> <laughs> oh all right that'll be the new one all, all right, right dan all right entertaining by k roll so but that might be k row 11 whatever all right so make the faces by the <laughs> <laughs> Smiling, <laughs> smirking. Oh my gosh, just <laughs> McCann starting oh, again. We left Kevin home alone, and he's only twenty-three. <laughs> uh, uh, stoned face. Uh, ate all the green money. Uh, <laughs> is that a dra is that a dragon head? <laughs> red circle, black circle, red circle, black circle, red circle. Cutter, Burundi, flag of Bonaire, Lesotho. <laughs> Norfolk Island. Fuck you. <laughs> Did you are those really the Yeah, the look you <laughs> he researched all the flags. I love it. Well done, Dan. All, all right, right, we'll snake jack. I, I, I want this next one. Okay. Oh wait, are you reading it from the next? Yeah, I want to do paper or plastic. Okay. Um, I'll do this other one then. For my favorite, favorite username that we see pop up in the live chat from Marlboro Do <laughs> that hits close to my Wedgefield, South Carolina roots. Uh, <laughs> review is FFS or for fuck's sake. I'm going to bet that's also Bo Dick. <laughs> <laughs> five stars. This dear is so painful. <laughs> <laughs> no emojis on this one. So, dear, at the lengths I went to to leave a review on this POS Apple software. Nevertheless, these guys are hilarious and informative and good to look at, especially Tim and the guy from Scotland or wherever. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever queen run island he's from keep up the great work and lastly fuck orlando heart uh plastic uh wlm or i guess wl mcclaney uh we've, we're friends with him on twitter 
Five stars. You plastic fucks sure do know a shitload about this hashtag bought not built club. Maybe you'll be a real soccer club when you have some substantial history behind you three to five years. I mean, football club. Who even says that? Real talk. Long time listener and huge fan. Keep it up. Dan, you got to up your Britishisms, you bloody plunker. Sincerely, a plastic fuck. Hot. Heart, <laughs> heart emoji. All right. Which one's next? Happiest of Joes. <laughs> do it. Hold on. Do you wanna do you wanna break this up because it's in three parts? Or do you wanna do you wanna tackle all those yourself? I could, I could take the middle one if you wanna if you guys want to say which. Oh I, yeah, because you didn't really get a string of them. Okay. Happiest of Joes for you, Dan. <laughs> all right. You want me to start at the top? <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta oh, you gotta more. read out the name of what the review is first. Of okay. All. <laughs> Speaking plus bourbon plus soccer equals awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. Speaking, speaking, speaking. Bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. Soccer ball, soccer ball, soccer ball. Waving plus red, red circle, black circle, red circle, black circle, red circle plus. King, King Peach. King Peach equals. Oh, <laughs> go. <laughs> oh, my turn. Uh, bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. Soccer ball, soccer ball, soccer ball. King Clover, mushroom, rainbow, coconut, aubergine, hot dog. Microphone, microphone, bicycle, snowman, tornado, snowflake, watermelon, <laughs> chocolate, soccer ball, gold, uh, three and a half floppy, floppy disk, celebration, <laughs> three and a half floppy <laughs> disk, <laughs> gift box, bourbon, bourbon, thumbs up, soccer, soccer, or soccer ball, soccer ball, yelling guy, red ball, oh my God. <laughs> red circle, black circle, red circle, black circle, red circle, soccer ball, soccer ball, soccer ball, bourbon, bourbon, <laughs> bourbon, <laughs> handshake, top hat, king, peach. Tyrannosaurus Rex, <laughs> Christmas tree, one of those big ass lollipops that they have in the movies you can never find in stores. The swirly one. Uh, soccer ball, siren, 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 phone, money bag, money bag. Juggler? Mr. Monopoly. That's Mr. Monopoly. Uh, laughing face, laughing face, laughing face. Red circle, black circle, red circle, black circle, greater than purple devils. That was pretty much how this podcast goes. Okay, and we got we got two more. Oh, okay. uh, so I did the last this yeah. one. Jupiter. I'll, I'll do the EHD fourteen. A okay. satisfied listener, five stars from EHD fourteen. Great to hear and add another Atlanta United podcast to the collection. When match day doesn't come, uh, when match day doesn't come soon enough, have no fear. HP four D is here. Tuesdays have a meaning now. Certified uncensored peach juice. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. gross. Keep them coming. <laughs> All right. Jupiter 623. So pumped to have this back. Five stars. If you're a fan of Atlanta United MLS or just sports in general, you need to check this podcast out. It's funny and easy to listen to. These guys know their stuff without being pretentious. Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> first game aside. EPL's the best. <laughs> I'm excited for our 2018 season and all this podcast has to offer. You've been killing it with a recent special guest, but don't ever change your original three way. Oh, Bridget! <laughs> Thank oh you my guys God. for your awesome reviews. You guys are the fucking best. Um, we are four away from a hundred on iTunes. We, you guys stepped up big. We got like eight this week total with reviews and ratings. So let's go ahead and round up. Thank, to thank God digits. you can't post images on these reviews. Yeah. I mean, good so c come up with a new happy, th a new fun theme for reviews and somebody set the bar going into this week. So we'll read those Great out next content. week. <laughs> Eventually, these are going to keep coming in. And we're going to have to have a whole separate show just to address them. But it is definitely the best way I can think of to end the show uh, on a high note. So thank you guys for doing that. You can find all of us on Twitter. Tim, where can they find you at? You can find me at Tim Herb. You can find Dan at DNJMS. You can find me as well at The Architect. That's at the underscore A-R-C. Number one, T-E-C-T. -E collectively at homebeforedark.com or at homebeforedark spelled B in the number four. Go to gethomebeforedark.com forward slash shop and or just gethomebeforedark.com for all the links to everything we've talked about. Uh, we will all or Tim and I will be out at the game Saturday. So try to Sunday. Sunday. I Wait, might just be out there by myself Saturday. Oh, apparently. And for those of you who are still listening, still watching Thursday night at the aquarium, uh, I, I think it's going to be limited attendance or limited uh, quantities, but make sure you guys go. There's going to be a March, uh, March to the stadium or whatever. There's going to be a, there's a whole thing going on this week. There's a block party happening in uh, East Atlanta Village on Saturday as well that you can s sign up for and get tickets for on AtlantaUnited.com. Yeah. 
it's going to be awesome. I'm going to yeah. be out there on Thursday, going to be hanging out, watching watching my... Uh, what do you want, Joey Herring? <laughs> Joey Herring says, wait in all caps. What is it? We're all waiting on you now. What is it? I always, I, I, hurry up. While we're waiting. 3-2 Atlanta. Come go, on, to forms, go to the forms, Joey. Go to the fucking <laughs> link. Jesus. <laughs> no, but Thanks you... for listening, Joey. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> go leave a review. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that poor, poor, poor Joey. <laughs> Joey, but for but for real, if you want to have your uh your chance at a prize pack, go to gethomebeforedark.com forward slash prediction. Go and put your prediction in there. We're gonna keep track during the season, as we said earlier on in the show, and award a prize pack for the best oh, person. Side note, uh we love you guys and we've been fortunate enough to Whoa, Joey was playing Fortnite with the boys. You need to get in and join us on Xbox so we can play, which was gonna be a good segue into my follow-up comment, which is a lot of you guys we talk to in live chat, and we try to make sure. A lot of you guys have crossed the threshold between friendship and listenership. And Kendrick Brock, congratulations! His bachelor party this weekend, uh, this past weekend. So he'll be getting married soon. Yeah, that's Damn, fantastic. Good news. job. I will say for those, of you, I get to watch my beautiful girlfriend. Oh God! Do sea lion shows on Thursday night <laughs> during the Atlanta United. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever, man. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, you guys, you guys, awesome. you guys should go and uh, go watch the the show on Thursday night. Yes. Go see the so C-Line David, show. Joey Herring, uh, Tim. You want to message or yeah, just tweet us at the links. We'll uh, we'll post our gamer tags up there. Mine's the architect, just like it is on Twitter, just no underscore. And Tim's is Dartface, spelled J R T F A C E. Correct. So so his friend invites, and we've got a pretty good group. I think with you two, we might have enough for two four party groups of people to play Fortnite at this point. Yeah, it'd be awesome. So, all right, guys. Um, all right, Atlanta. Thank you so much. It's uh, just looking beat, forward to some DC points United. this weekend, one way or another, to break the streak against DC United. Fourth time's a charm. <laughs> Love you, homies. And we will see you next week. Come rain or shine, win or lose. As always, be home before dark. What? Where's where's your call out for the DC game, man? That's supposed to be at the end. Just of the show. fucking beat DC United. <laughs> God damn it! It's the fourth try, four <laughs> times. All right, now we have our eardrums. Bye, guys. <laughs>